word of Alice and her crew's handling of the cows had reached the ears of the Fat Controller. And the next time he'd seen the new Atlantic engine, he congratulated her on her efforts. You are indeed proving to be a good, er, uh, investment. I hope you continue in the sheer fashion and be a credit to my railway. Upon her arrival to the railway, Alice stayed at Wellsworth with Boko, but now the Fat Controller had decided that she would be stabled at the big engine sheds at Tidmouth. That night in the shed, she raggled the other engines with stories of her life before she came to the Northwestern Railway. I mostly pulled light passenger trains. Most of them were stopping trains. It grew rather boring stopping at every station by having the chance to really stretch my wheels. But as time went on, I was in need of an extensive overhaul. But the railway simply couldn't afford, so the fat controller offered to purchase me and perform the overhaul at Crovens Gate, and here I am in full steam again. Just then, Gordon backed into the shed. He wasn't aware of Alice's arrival. When he glanced at the Great Northern Railway Atlantic, a big smile came across his face. Why, bless my soul! Alice! I haven't seen you since my days as an experimental prototype locomotive on the East Coast Main Line. Alice remembered the big blue engine well. Ah, Gordon, it's good to see you're still in working order. You look rather smart in your blue livery, she replied. There are many fast trains on the Fat Controllers Railway, as well as the express passenger service to London. And around the island there is the Flying Kipper and the Early Morning Milk Trains, which are classified as good expresses. The Milk Express is made up of tank wagons picked up from various dairies along the railway. These are taken to various stations where the milk is collected to be bottled and shipped to the mainland. The Fat Controller was still keen to put Alice through her paces, so she was put on the Early Morning Milk Train. Excellent! This will really give me a chance to really stretch my wheels, she said to Edward. But Edward was worried. The tank wagons used to carry the milk were rather old and were prone to derail at the most inconvenient of times. I admire your enthusiasm, but please be careful, said Edward worriedly. Alice's driver and fireman arrived early the next morning. It was still dark as the two men were preparing their engine. Come on, old girl, called the driver. Let's get these tankers. And then throwing open the regulator and a hiss of steam, Alice puffed out of the yard. She collected milk tankers from dairies all across the railway. The sun was rising as Alice glided along the main line. Come on, come on, come on, Alice puffed to the trucks as she started to climb Gordon's hill. The trucks clattered and banged behind her. She was soon coasting down the other side of the hill, but from here things became complicated. The truck shook violently, swaying to and fro. There was a great danger of one or all of the trucks coming off the rails. And then it happened. As they came into Edward Station, a tanker in the middle of the train came off the rails and burst as it hit the platform. Milk went everywhere. Alice's driver brought the train to a stop just yards out of the station. You stupid engine, scolded the station master. I just swept them up these platforms this morning and you had to come and ruin it. 
Alice felt terrible. She felt even worse as she seen James coming into the station on the opposite line. Cheer up, Alice. There's no use crying over spilt milk, teased James. But Alice wasn't worried about that. She was worried about what the fat controller would say. But she needed have worried. The fat controller acknowledged that the axles on the trucks were unstable and needed refitting, leaving Alice with a great sense of relief. Her credibility was still intact. <laughs>